New York shit. No Jumper, coolest podcast in the world. We got motherfucking Bodega Bams in here today. Let's get it. Let's Lil get it. Sasson. Lil Sasson, a.k.a. Young Dawn, <laughs> a.k.a. Poppy, a.k.a. Oscar De La Goya. <laughs> First thing we need to talk about is this new uh, face tattoo that you be rocking. Yeah, yeah. Yo, this is the new wave. I sold my soul to Vice. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but instead of the cooking, the cooking shit, like they got with action... We cooking crack on Vice. That's my fucking segment on Vice, right, Ola? That's right. This you know, is your real idea, is that you want to cook crack yeah, on Vice? Fuck yeah, they they gotta see that, man. They gotta see niggas cooking crack, actual crack, my nigga, and not hiding their face at the Discovery Channel. You gotta show their face when you're cooking the crack. Up. Wow. So is that that's really what you pitched to Vice today, or are you allowed to talk about what you really? <laughs> nah, 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 nah. I, I ain't pitched that. that yeah, I gotta keep it low key, man. Keep it low key, man. <laughs> I don't want niggas biting my shit, man. For real, for real. There's so many biters out here, man. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, yo, I wanted to uh, just start off with, like, where you're from and everything, because I know you're from Spanish Harlem. It's a very unique <coughs> place that plays a big role in your identity. Uh, I, want, I want to know, like, what was it like? Tell me about where you grew up. What, uh, what are the cross streets? Cross streets 119 between 2nd and 3rd, man. Um, you ever heard of, um, remember, remember, remember that girl, Lumi D? Yeah, yeah. She's from my block. Okay. We're from the same block and shit like that. Um, yeah, 119 between second and third, Spanish Harlem, man. You know, one of the most infamous blocks in Spanish Harlem. You know what I'm saying? Like, especially in the 80s with the whole drug epidemic and crack epidemic that was going on. Right. And, um, you know, a lot of people don't know that Spanish Harlem is the east side of Manhattan. Right, so yeah. you have Harlem, which is the west side, right? And you have Spanish Harlem, which is the east side. And Spanish Harlem is very much smaller than West Harlem. And, you know, we really didn't have a rapper or any kind of movement come out of there that really exploded, like, Dipset and Big L and Mace and the motherfuckers. So in Spanish Harlem, you guys don't take credit for Dipset? Nah, because nah. they not from... It's kind of weird, you know what I'm saying? Because you got Jimmy. Jimmy Jimmy is... He said he's from certain areas from Spanish Harlem, but he also says he's from certain areas from Harlem. So it's like, you ain't have a motherfucker... Like, but there's a few niggas out, but, like, a nigga like me, I'm from Spanish Harlem. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Like, I'm from 119, which is second and third. So... I don't say I'm from here, I'm from there, I'm really from Spanish Harlem. Right, yeah, You know what I'm yeah. saying? So we ain't really have that, like, you know what I mean? Like, because like I said, Cam got family from the east side, but, you know, he's from the west side. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And Big L and so forth or whatever. But. And you're how old? I'm 31. 31, okay. So you grew up on a lot of the same shit that I grew up on. So yeah. so you were, you what, what first got you interested in rap music and what, what were the original artists? Because Harlem's history is so deep with this shit. Yeah, man. I mean, original artists from Harlem, um... There's a there's a whole bunch of motherfuckers, man. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I could go I could go like to the fucking children in the corn. You know what I'm saying? Like with bloodshed and Cam and Big L. So you remember listening to that while they were all out? Not when they were out, cause okay. I was young. Yeah, but when yeah, I yeah. but like in around '98, they were still prevalent. You know what I'm saying? So you would still listen to them shits or whatever, and those tips would still be around. Right. Cause bloodshed, like he died so long ago, mm -hmm. but there's a mural. In Spanish Harlem That's been there for like 25 years Really? It's never been written over Never wow. been tagged up Yeah so they respect They respect the blood shit Cause of Cam and all that Yeah But um Yo I was a Mace fan man You know what I'm saying Harlem like Cause you know Big L Like I, I got onto Big L later I got onto Big L in the big picture When he died Yeah yeah same, same. You know what I'm saying like, Right as he died Yeah that's right as he everybody Kind of found out What year was that? You know? 99 99, 99 yeah. yeah 99 2000 So that's when I got onto Big L You know what I'm saying But I was Die Hard Mace Because that's when I first started listening to rap Like in 97 Right So you're in like 7th grade You're Facts. first going to the school dance and shit And Mace was everywhere Along everywhere. with Biggie and Puffy and shit he had, You had, you know what I'm saying He had the waves spinning You know what mm, I mean He had yep. the, the do-rag You know what I mean Like he had to tie the dude You know the little thing that hangs in the bottom He tied it up and put it inside Like <laughs> Mace was more fuck. Huh? The cape. The cape, he tied the cape up like motherfuckers wasn't doing. Then he put the the fitted on on the side with the. Oh, you man. aspired to own a shiny suit at that time or what? Hell yeah, yo, bro, I'm a I'm a huge Puff Daddy fan. Like, yeah. yo, niggas don't understand. Puff Daddy is my, like my favorite rapper, bro. Really? I might sound corny, but that's the truth. Why? Why, why you say that? When because like he's, he's well known for not writing his own raps, right? That's why. Yeah. I, I love that. You know I love the fact that this is a man who don't, who's never been ashamed of not writing his own shit, and he's still around. And he's such a creator, and like I mean, and, and you see like the influence with Mace and and Big and and the Locks and Black Rob and the list goes on. And now French, like Son, is just a super super creator, and I'm just happy he's from fucking Harlem. I used to love when he used to dance Cause you don't really peep Like before Kanye And all these motherfuckers Like Puff was like uh, I mean after Pac Like Puff was like The biggest rap superstar yeah. I mean it wasn't A bigger motherfucker than him right. mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying Like the dude was doing Shit with Sting mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying Like nobody was doing Shit like that man Were you so, affected When Biggie died I was young mm. I remember being in camp You know what I'm saying I, I was young You know what I mean It was what 97 when mm -hmm. he died Yeah I was young Um 
I got, I was, you know, believe it or not, I wasn't even affected when Pun died because I was young too. I was affected when Stack Bundles died. Yeah. I remember when Stack when Stack Bundles died. That's when I was in my teens now, and I was in yeah. high school. You could really comprehend what was going yeah, on. Yeah, and he and and we used to watch him on the Smack DVDs, and I used to kill shit. And right. when he died, I remember it was like a turn to my stomach. Like, damn, this nigga's gone. Like right. they killed this man. So it was more relatable and shit too, because he's on those DVDs, so you could kind of imagine yourself a little bit more in that position. Exactly. We used to we used to buy those DVDs, and we right. used to want to. Want to see Stack bundles rapping and shit like that? So I feel like you know Stack was like the first hip hop death that I was affected by. Right. So you're talking about the Smack DVDs and shit. So mm-hmm. what were your early days again into? Well, you're talking about '97 and shit. Was there a mixtape game where you buying mixtapes in '97? Right. Clue. Okay. So you're on that early wave. And maybe Flex. Maybe Flex. Um, of you had niggas like Ron G. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Ron G's a little old school. Uh, who else? But Clue was killing it. You know what I'm saying? There was there was a spot in Harlem on 125th. It was called, um, what was the what was something Music Hut? Uh-huh. Forgot the dude's name, but he was an African dude, and everybody used to go there. Right. Everybody used to go there on 125th between fucking Madison and Lennox, I think it was. There's new tapes all the time. All the time, and you Kids know, nowadays Clue, can't comp- comprehend. You nah, gotta go spend five bucks, ten nah. bucks to get a tape every day. Yeah. That shit was amazing, man. That you no, know, those times, like you know, like like I said, man, I, I came up on a good time. You know what I'm saying? Like, cause I ain't, I'm not a fucking old man, but I also, I'm not a, a baby either. Mm-hmm. You know, what I mean, I came up like in the middle of that shit. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? But I remember when Clue was going crazy with the the professional. I remember when the Hard Knock Life tour was out. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? I remember watching the DVD and all that. I remember when Smack first came out and before the battle shit there is. Right now, like how they used to wait towards the end of right. the DVD, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, man, that that was like our unsigned hype. Like, who the fuck was coming up? Yeah, yeah you got to taste of, like the '90s physical world into the digital today. Yeah, exactly. And and and, and, and that's why I, t- I tell people like people be like, Yo, Ben, what you listen to? I be like, Yo, listen, man. Like, first of all, I don't listen to rap, you know what I'm saying? But if I do, the era I listen to rap is between '98 and 2002. I feel like that's the most special year, my personal opinion to me. You know what I mean? How I felt of rap, like, cause just cause like. It, 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 like you had so many motherfuckers coming out at the same time, and all them niggas is, is legends now. You know right. what I'm saying? Like you could have a whole bunch of rappers now, but not all of those are gonna be legends. In '98, you had Cam, you had Mace, you had Pun, DMX, DMX, <laughs> Jay came out with Hard Knock Life. You had Jocko. Cash Money, and them niggas over there in New Orleans. You nah, had Ja, so you had you had yeah. all that at one time, and and they all ate together. It wasn't just one clear champion. It, everybody was eating in, in some capacity. Right. That was a real high point for New York. But then it's kind of like when we think about the early 2000s, we think about Cam and we think about 50. And that kind of became what New York was in a certain sense where Smack DVD became overrun. It was all 50. It was like you weren't even a rapper back then if you didn't have beef with 50. It was some wild shit at that time. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm glad. I'm I'm fucking glad, too, that I was a part of that era of seeing 50. I remember when 50 came. Yeah, let's talk about the rain, man. That was a wild time. That was that was. No, like none other. Yeah. It's like none other. Like there were. I don't think there would ever be a a a, a person nah, come yeah. out of New York. Like that was the last did. time before the internet really took over everything. So he was still able to be like the MTV dude, the street dude, the everything all at the same time. So that's why it was so huge. Yeah. You know? It was. A, it was that. That was an amazing time, man. And you know, being a teenager, fresh in high school, freshman. You know what I mean, like. Have 50 fucking, like, just looking at this man, what the fuck he's doing with the white boy Eminem. Like, that shit was crazy. Man. Right. But do you look at, like, do you look at the other boroughs as a kid from Harlem and you're looking at, like, a, a dude coming out of Queens and you're just kind of like, ah, whatever. You yeah. Know? A little bit. Yeah, but I mean, cause that, but that's just some Harlem shit. Right. It's no, nothing personal towards niggas. It's just, like, Harlem is, like, yo, everybody that's from Harlem, you ask anybody from Harlem, rapper or hustler, we always feel like we number one. Right. That's just that. That's the Harlem in us. That's what they say. The Harlem in you. You know what I mean? Like right. so, I don't give a fuck about nobody else. Another. Well, you guys are the city. At the end of the day, everybody else is on another fucking island. We, you know, they're away from you. Yeah, exactly. We the heart. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And, and if you look at shit like we inspire everything. Right. In one way or another. You know what I'm right. saying? Whether niggas want to get props or not, we do. You know what I'm saying? Whether it's drug dealing from the '80s, whether how Cam did it with the swag and how he was dressing, how Mace did it with the Goldie era, like and like I said, Puff and you know what I mean, like. Dame Dash, like we we got so many motherfuckers that was just inspiring motherfuckers in the golden age of rap. Right. And the crazy thing that people don't realize too is that like somebody who doesn't really understand the geography of the city is that Harlem is a very small part of the city that has had a really outsized influence because it's just there's you could look at the all the rest of Manhattan and there's not nearly as much like maybe combined compared to Harlem. It's just so much soul and so much 
creativity in that area. Yeah, you know, like you know, and if you do your history, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, Harlem was Bumpy Johnson. You know what I'm saying? Like Harlem got so much fucking rich history from the mafia. You know what I'm saying? Like it, it, like I said, like in the name just Harlem, it just stands out. You know what I mean? Right. Like you got niggas like Malcolm X used to be out here. You know what I'm saying? Malcolm X got killed in Harlem. You know, he got assassinated in Harlem. So you know, our sh- you know, our shit is official. But you know, I fuck with all you know, every borough got a different flavor. Like Queens got all the bitches. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Queens got an assortment of women. But what do you mean? Like the clubs and shit? Or you just mean that they literally are all a million girls they, there? They, they, they literally have a million girls they, like, live there. They have Asians, <laughs> whites, blacks, Everything. Latinas, uh-huh. Chileans. Wait, and, what changed in Harlem? Like why? Like if it was so influential, do you feel like it's still... Like what changed? I, I think Harlem is always going to be influential. Yeah. I just think like at certain times the, the spotlight comes back at us. Okay. So like... You know, when like Rocky came out, it was like, oh shit, let's let's put our focus on Harlem now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, now it's back. Now it's like we, where is it back? Like to Atlanta and all these little this and little that's and all that. So it kind of comes in waves. Yeah, but Harlem is always gonna be there. Yeah. Like people look at us and they get their swag from us. Like oh. you had Nelly wearing Jordans in his fucking video. Like you know what I'm saying? Well, like, Air Force One. Air Force Ones. You know that's the like, That's the Uptown Bronx Harlem thing. It, you know what I'm saying? Like Harlem is always gonna be that staple where people look at and just go back at. Like yo, know, let me see what the niggas got going on over there. And well, just, hey, were you a diehard Dipset fan to the extent that you knew about like how Rel? Were you buying how Rel mixtapes? Nah, so you, you didn't take nah, it that far. I, f- nah. I fuck with how Rel. I fuck with Rel. Thank of, you. What you said, mouth full of bullets. What's that shit? With the shit full of bullets. The, uh, the mixtape with the bullets in his like, mouth. That shit was eat hard. Eat my dick or eat a box of bullets or yeah. some shit. Rel was hard. <laughs> now he said some fire one time. Yeah. He said. He said something about you got changed for a billion. He said some, yeah, he was said some funny shit. Fuck with you know, and, and then Smack one time he said uh, he said I went to the doctor, got an AIDS test, I came back negative, <laughs> I came back positive for swag, and then Yams immortalized that because Yams put that in a tweet one time, which is like I hadn't thought about it in five years or some shit before that. Yeah. Oh, that's fire! I didn't even peep it. He got it from Rel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Rel was Rel, but Rel's from Bronx. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Not even from Harlem. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Rel so, but but yeah, like. I was never really a diehard, diehard Dipset fan. I, mm-hmm. I love Cam, you know what I'm saying? I love Jimmy a lot at okay. one point. You know what I mean? Like, I love Jim Jones a lot. Um, but, you know, their wave was undeniable, man. Right, it was yeah. influential, yeah, they you know what I'm saying? Their like, movement was, like, unexplainable, bro. Yeah, they, like, they, shit was, they shit was just undeniable. Like, you had to just make way for those motherfuckers. Yeah. Like, just even, just the fashion-wise in general. Like, right. they immortalized how, Har- like, they made drug dealing in Harlem look Good, like yeah. on some rap level shit. Right. You know what I'm saying? So So what were you really like geeking over on a personal level? Like DMX. That, that was your shit. DMX. In what, 98 or so? That DMX. was you, you just went crazy. Yeah, DMX, man. DMX. And what DMX. was it? What did it for you about him? Yo, it's because he was like my age Tupac. You know what I mean? Remember remember when I'm like in in my early teens, Pac is already dead. Right. So I'm hearing who Pac is through the radio and yeah. MTV, but I'm not feeling him because right. I don't know who he is. But DMX was that new age Pac to me. Right. You know what I'm saying? And 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 it's crazy because I just had a show open enough for DMX in fucking in um Same Nokia man. Theater in San Oh yeah, okay, both. Yeah, and yeah, that yeah, sh- about that show. yeah, that shit was um surreal. You know what I'm saying? Because this is a dude like out of all the rappers I done listened to, it came up to, he had the biggest influence on me. You know what I'm saying? He wasn't the first rapper I've, I heard about. You know, the first rapper I heard about was Pac. Mm-hmm. You know, and the first um rap record I, I memorized was Dear Mama. But DMX just had that influence on me like none other, you know what I mean? Because he talks about church. I came up in church, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? I just felt some pain, you know what I mean? Like, I just love that man, you know what I mean? Like, I, I, it's crazy. I was watching that whole Dr. Drew shit, and I should have teared for that nigga. Really? That shit, I felt that shit. What, DMX Wait, what was that? Dr. Drew? I yeah. didn't see that. Yeah, he was on Dr. Drew talking about his mom. His, he was like dead ass balling, yo, because his mom had like abandoned him, and then Dr. Drew put him and his mom together, and he just started balling. I'm like, damn, that shit is sad, B, you know what I mean? Like, wow. It's fucked up, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, and that's why like the show was that special to me, you know what right. I'm saying? Because God forbid, you know, he gotta go, I I could be able to say that. Right. I mean, like I could be able to in my journey, I'd be like, Yo, listen, man, I got to share the stage at one point. He didn't say, I didn't get to say hi to him. Yeah. I didn't, you know, get to speak to him. But, but he's got to approve you to open. I mean, he's got to pick you. Yeah. They, but, but, yo, what's crazy is that because he was he saw me perform. So at. I was so fucking drunk and high, you know what I'm saying? So I was up being, I was fanned out, bro, right? right. 
So I'm I'm talking to his manager like, yo, can, let me meet the dog, bro. I got to meet the dog. Right. And his manager like, yeah, 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 yo, where you from? I'm like, yo, I'm from such and such. Him, right? huh? it, nobody got to meet him. Zone, because right, they right, don't right. want nobody around that yeah. man. But I, I literally had to stop myself like, yo, I'm both they got bands, B. You know like, I, I was so drunk and high. <laughs> so I, I, but, but I'm looking around like. Yo, what the fuck am I doing, yo? I'm out of here. You know what I'm saying? Because then I had to really talk myself. Because I was really trying to get to see this man, and they was not letting me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I was really feeling like a groupie. So I was like, nah, I'm out of here. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, well, like. If there's anybody that you're going to behave like that for, it's probably going to be him. Right? Yeah, like, yeah, hell yeah. Because there's Especially no when new you're rapper that's going to make you like that. Nah. It's, it's got to be the kid that you liked when you were 13. And when I seen, yo, that shit was crazy. When I seen, just me and my brother, me and Ola, we was seeing him come to the stage. Like, his manager, we, we watching him, right? I'm like, oh, shit, that's X. His manager tried to put his hand on me, like, yo, move out. Because I, I tried to exit off the stage because I, I was literally the direct opener. So, so after me, it was him. So I tried to walk off the stage, and his manager put his hand on me. I'm like, yo, man, like, you ain't got to put your hand on me, bro. Like, you don't got to do that, my G. Yeah. Nah, ain't nothing's all love. I'm like, don't do that, bro. Like, I'm a fan of the homie, bro. Like, I, I grew up on the dog. Like, you ain't got to do that. You know what I'm saying? But I understand because they probably never heard of me. You know what I'm saying? Like, so, but you know, that's how tight they was with him. Like, right. them niggas was not trying to let nobody near that, right. man. Yeah. Because he's running into problems with, no matter what. Somebody's trying to give him something everywhere Some, it goes. Someone right. told us they got his watch stolen before Yeah, that the same show. night when he was doing these shows. $30,000 watch. Yeah. They caught it, right? Did they? I think I, I saw that in the news. It, I heard, I heard, they, I heard they stole. Yeah, they stole it. Yeah. So probably they had security extra tight. Yeah. Hey, so it's hard times out here for the dog. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so so what about your rapping though? Were you rapping from the very beginning, or when did you start deciding you want to spit? Uh, I mean, shit. When I first, you know, what I'm saying, like my first motherfucking passion was acting. <laughs> really? Yeah, bro. Even to this day, you know what I mean, like. I, I, like I, that was my first thing. I used to be in plays. I tried out. You know, there was a show. I don't know if y'all niggas got it out here. I, y'all probably did. It was called The Reading Rainbow. Oh, duh, oh yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I tried. My mom, because of my passion for wanting to be an actor, I was in dramas and all that. She took me to read for The Reading Rainbow to be on the show. Them niggas curved me. Shout out to that dude. I forgot the fucking nigga's name. Uh, he was Lavar Burton. Lavar. Shout out to <laughs> fucking Lavar Burton. <laughs> Lavar Burton yeah, never called me back. Roots, he was in fact, Roots. <laughs> yeah, but that was, you know, that was. And then during that time, I was doing poetry. I mean, I, I know every rapper says that shit, but I really was. You know I don't saying? think rappers say that poetry. Like that, that's very rare, actually. I think that rappers have that experience. What? I think so. I yeah, didn't I heard, heard anybody say that. On you, here. Heard, you heard anybody say they do poetry? Yeah, I have. Okay, all right. Well, I really did because I used to listen to because I, I used to read Langston Hughes. I used to read Edgar Allan Poe. Yeah. So I was into all that shit. Um, it wasn't until I got to high school. When I got to high school, I seen that you know rapping was. Like the popular thing to do. Right. This is around the time we're coming to age when Men Bleak was coming out. Okay. When, like I said, Hard Not Life was formated, and, and 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 I'm like, yo, like, look how much, you know what I mean? Popularity these motherfuckers is getting. So I, yo, fuck it, let me try this shit. So what I used to do is. I used to take rhymes from rappers that I knew that the, the classmates wouldn't know. So at the time in 98, I was a huge Slim Shady fan. Okay. I love Eminem. I loved them, loved them, loved them. But they so didn't I, know about him yet? Then, nah, because niggas in the hood wasn't listening to Eminem. Okay. They, they didn't give a fuck about that shit. Okay. You know what I mean? They, they, that shit was trash. That's very different from my suburban white boy nah, uh, they, upbringing. Everybody knew about Eminem. Hell no. <laughs> niggas was not fucking. Niggas, yo. Niggas would dead ass look at your CD and throw that shit, yo. Word. If you listen to Eminem in my hell heart. Hell yeah. It's Spanish Harlem. Yeah. So I would take. um. Eminem rhymes from Slim Shady LP, and I would battle niggas, and these niggas still said I was whack. <laughs> they still said you I was against the wall right there. Four million records, and they said he was. They you did his shit, and they said you was shit. Yeah, I, I like, they still I said I was. Rhyme and word of the time. <laughs> yeah, I, did, I used to say that one right there. Yeah. <laughs> word of a rhyme, word of the time. You never heard of a mind perverted his mind. Yeah, you better okay, get rid yeah, of that. Not. Yeah, I used to say that what shit. What kids are gonna help? Yeah. <laughs> and these niggas was looking at me like, yo, you mad whack, bro? Like, <laughs> fuck out of here. <laughs> so it's like the hardest thing in the world to get respect as a rapper in Harlem at that young age. I'm guessing. Right? And yeah, and that in that time. That time was when battling was really kicking off and all. Right. So you had niggas like Jay Mills. It's before Mook yes. came on the scene. You okay. had dudes like dudes named Shells. You had dudes Yo. like um um who else, man? You, Party you, Artie. You had Party Artie. You had a lot of motherfucking underground on Casa. A lot of these niggas. On Casa, holy shit. Yeah. You, had start, a, you started battling first. I did start battling. Because, and, you know, this is when uh, MT, or BT started putting it on, what the fuck was it called? One of uh, 106 in Park in the morning. They would have the battle on yeah, there. Yeah, Poster so Boy. Like that kind of fed into it a little bit. Hell Rel was on that shit back in the day. Hell Rel. He lost. Max tried to drag him for it. Yeah. yeah. Everybody got dragged but for it. Poster Boy was from Harlem. Poster Shaheen, boy, yeah. the Poster Boy. You know what I'm saying? Like, so this is around the time when the shit was really kicking, kicking the shit off. It was really kicking off so 
during that time because I didn't know how to write to a beat. The easiest thing to do was the battle. Yeah. All you got to do is show aggressive, aggressiveness. You, you say some punch lines, and so I was doing that too or whatever. And and then little by little started getting better and better and better. I went through a lot of I, like my first name was Flawless the Demon. Ooh, okay. You know what I'm saying? And right. and um. From there, I went from to Nate Bams. Then I went to Nate Bambino. Then I became Bodega Bams, and then it just, just stuck. Just you called yourself that in a song one time, right? Yeah. And yeah. motherfuckers don't really know. Describe your Bodega that you grew up going to. Because <laughs> Wait, Bodega Bams is like one of my favorite rap names. Oh, that's an amazing rap name. Thanks, Bodega Bams and Young Thug. Bodega is one of the best words. And also, you know what's funny is I was watching Ron Rosenberg today, and he calls it like Bodega. Like he tries to say it like he's from where you're from. Yeah, I'm saying man. Bodega. Yeah, like yeah, a yeah. Regular yeah. ass white yeah. person. Wait, what was that Dave Chappelle movie where he describes what it is? Like Bodega. Like Chappelle, I think it was like half baked or something like yeah, that. Yeah, I think oh, it was half baked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah man. Um, What's your bodega like? Yo, bro, bo- you know, you got Hector. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> yo, you know what I'm saying? You got Hector. You know what I mean? You got the numbers in the back. You know what I'm saying? You got the fucking um. The cat sleeping on got the bread. cat sleeping on the bread. Yep. You know what I'm saying? You got you got the old drunk guy just on there talking all day. And then you know what was fire about the bodegas back in the day, man? It, you used to be it was a part of the community right so mm-hmm. it was positive so you know a struggling mother like mine she she can be able to go to the bodega and, 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 and she can owe them like yo I ain't got yeah, money yeah. for the bread but I'll be back you don't got that nowadays no, Cause no disrespect like you know mostly the, the bodegas are, are dominated by Pakistanis now you know what I'm yeah, saying so yeah. that's all it is it's not too much Dominicans and Puerto Ricans unless you go up town but you don't think the Pakistanis like show love to the Puerto Rican people and shit to the extent like I would always have like packages sent to the ones that by my house and stuff and they would just take it you know like little things like that nah they, they don't I'm gonna tell you why I don't show love because they sell us Lucy's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they want to kill us. <laughs> you go to a Dominican bodega or Puerto Rican bodega, they never sell Lucy's. What? You you show me a, a a Latino bodega that sells Lucy's, bro. That's a very rare shop. So every bodega in New York doesn't sell Lucy's anymore. I no. felt like when I lived there like six years ago, it was still like everywhere you went had it. Nah, they, they, nah. I mean, uptown. Single cigarettes, in case you're just. Yeah, kidding. single cigarettes. <laughs> yeah, single what cigarettes. Is it 50 cents or a dollar now? It's 75 now. Oh, why not? Yeah. Okay. 75 now. Yeah, but I'm from that 50 cent era. Yeah. Same. But it's 75 now. Um, um, three for two dollars. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Get the good old deal. Niggas be like, yo, bam, so you got money. Why you buy um why you why you buy Lucy's? I'll be like, my nigga, because if I buy packs, I'm gonna smoke them shits in the day. Yeah. Yo, bro, I've been out in fucking LA. I've been out in LA, excuse me, I've been out in LA since the 6th of this month, April. And yo, bro, we done ran like at least through like 11 packs, bro. Yeah. And because they're $5, you know, in New York it's 14 Yeah. Yeah. But it's like. So it's basically free out it's, here. Yeah, right? exactly. So I'm running through them bitches, but what people don't understand is it's just like. Once you got a pack in your hand, you want to smoke every. You want to smoke all the time. Yeah. But if you go to a Lucy store, you get like three Lucy's. You gonna space them bitches out. Yeah. Like, Yo, I'm gonna smoke one head. I'm gonna three, three hours later smoke the other one. If you buy them one at a time, then nobody can bum them off you. And no, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But yeah, man. The um. Yeah, that's my bodega, man. You know, fucking cola champagne. I don't know if you ever had cola champagne. Like it's. Yeah, you know I mean it's um. What are the sandwiches like at your bodega? Oh, amazing, man. Yeah. You know, ham and cheese, man. I don't eat pork no more, but ham and cheese, turkey and cheese, uh, you know, boar's head, too. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, like that's another thing. The Pakistans, they don't sell ham. You know, they don't oh, they sell don't ham. At all. Nah, they don't oh, sell no pork. Yeah, okay. It's turkey bacon. They don't sell no pork. You know what I'm saying? They got any, like, sign that says, like, organic shit, like, at your bodega? Or Hell you not catch no. on to that yet. Hell no. You go back to Williamsburg <laughs> and Bushwick, like, the bodegas I used to go to when I lived out there and shit, and they all got organic, 100% natural in the name and shit. Yeah, because, you know, Williamsburg and Brooklyn, <laughs> it's man. It's 100% different. It's out there. different. Yeah. They on the up, they on the uppity. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like that's not uptown Harlem, Bronx, Queens. Like nah, they ain't no fucking organic. <laughs> Hell no. You go get some salad. You want some organic? Yeah. There ain't no organic in the bodega. What's the most wild ass bodega that you ever ran into in your whole time living in New York, though? Because mm. I know you've seen some fucking lit ones. Yo, wild ass bodega. <clears throat> Shit, yo. Like story wise, it's just like crazy look-wise. shit you've seen, or like I remember when I lived in Brooklyn that there was a bodega that would be serving Viagra to all these motherfuckers, and I always I never tried it, but I always <laughs> thought that was pretty cool that the bodega would sell you like a five dollar pill but real mo- quick. Most bodegas got those. Those those manly pills. But those are fake. Viagra, some other shit. Yeah, yeah. I never Wait, seen is, Viagra, it, is every bodega a front like they are always selling? A lot are. Like, you go into a bodega that don't really have any food in it and shit, and then yeah. you kind of know that, like, yeah. unless they have a good stock, unless it seems, if they seem like they're not really concerned with selling shit, then there's a good chance they're trapping them. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I heard that there's a whole list of uh, bodegas that cops can't go into because they're, like, known as being, like, sketchy-ass ones. Somebody told me that. Holy shit. You know, it makes sense. 
Nah, but there's there's definitely um yeah that shit is pre- very prevalent, man. Them niggas definitely doing some business deals in the fucking <laughs> day guys. How do you get from battling to like then like writing to a beat? Uh, good question, bro. Um, yeah, when did you decide to make a song? I was like 20 years old. Um, how did I get um? Were you winning a lot of the battles? Hell like, yeah, I was you became killing a dude. Yeah, I was chewing niggas' heads off. Yo, bro, I was killing niggas so much. I got locked up one time, and I'm s- s- sitting in the bullpen, and one of the homies, I don't even know the nigga, but he came from another hood. He was like, "Yo, you mad nice, b? Yo, my man rap right here. Yo, you rap, you rap for these niggas in here." And I'm in the bullpen rapping the niggas while I'm waiting to get get, get out the cell. Yeah. Word, that's <laughs> so I was killing motherfuckers. That's a fact. I was really on the east, and that's why I like you know what I'm saying. I love my hood so much. You know what I'm saying because I really came from my hood. You know what I'm right. saying. I really battled in my hood. You know what I'm saying. Like you know I'm. Not, I wasn't as famous as Murder Mook and all of them, but I, I you know, I, I did my shit battling. You know what I'm saying right. in different projects and shit like that. You know what I mean? So, yeah, you know, I, I, I lost. I, I wasn't perfect. You know what I mean? But I, I've definitely, I've won the shit and I've, I've lost as well too. But is it good for you that you? We're not battling in the age of social media where you could just get called out for losing mad quick, or did you ever have? Could we find a video of you getting <laughs> trounced in a battle now? Or no, no. This hell no, hell that, no. Right? This before. Yeah. It was before. Handheld cameras and and fucking um niggas was iPhones and shit. Yeah, it was before that shit. You know what I'm would saying? you battle today for the right price? Yeah, I would battle, man. But it would have battle. to be the right price. It would definitely have to be the right price. Yeah, because yeah. the battling scene seems like they kind of have some some heat again, sort of like people sort of fuck with battling, but it's always gonna it's be like YouTube, an underground man. thing now. The re- but the reason why I'm not scared to battle is because, like. <coughs> I got character mm-hmm. And that's imp- Important in battling Charisma Right See what I'm saying So like My charisma alone Will kill a motherfucker Right Like I can deliver a rhyme And it could be the wackest shit But I can make the simplest shit Sound hot right. Because I have that charisma Like even if you see my videos It's all about charisma Yeah you know what I'm saying so I'm In that aspect I- I'll be fucking A plus Did you always realize that though That the strength of you As a rapper Was the fact that you just had A lot of fucking personality On display That you could that you could put that out there like that? Nah, I, nah, because it, it not realize because it, it, it's, it's, it's me. You know what I'm saying so. Right. It's not like a gimmick. It's not like yo, bam, yo. When you get in this video, just act crazy. Mm-hmm. It's just these how this is how I am. You know what I'm saying I, I talk with a lot of energy. I I'm very passionate when I talk. You know what I'm saying so when it, when and, and I'm very passionate about my music. So I just want people to feel me. You know what I'm saying right. and like I said, my favorite rapper was DMX, and that's his whole shit. Right. His whole shit was the praying on stage and Lord. The, ex- the emotion The emotion So it out yeah, yeah So I, I'm from that cloth So like It was like You know People tell me that shit over time Like you know Your band is like You, you be so energetic And mm-hmm. yo Like you know, the way you perform And it's like it's, it's just me It's just inside of me man It's like a switch that goes on You know what I'm right. saying So you feel like You're representing for like Harlem as well as like Puerto Rican people Or just Spanish people In New York in general Is that like a big thing for you too Cause yeah. there's not a lot of other dudes Who are really flying that flag right Yeah definitely Um it's a huge thing for us, you know what I'm saying? And let me explain why. Because there's nobody else doing it, mm-hmm. right? And as much as I love every other race, you know what I'm saying? Like, and if you come to my shows, it, there's, 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 there's a, a, a half white, half black, half Spanish, so it's not just one yeah, you race. You probably have a very mixed crowd, it's right? It's very, very yeah. mixed, you know what I'm saying? Like, but as far as like representing for my people, you know what I mean? Like I do that shit with pride because nobody else is doing it, mm-hmm. and I feel like if if I don't do it, then um, I'm not gonna say well we we I feel like we're not respected the way we should be, mm-hmm. you know. And and I calm down on that topic a lot because when I first came in this motherfucker, bro, like I was on sway, I was on all these motherfuckers. Like, well, listen, I'm the hottest Latino out. What's up? And I was ruffling a lot of feathers. But whose fe- feathers were getting ruffled, Fat Joe? I ain't gonna say no motherfucking days. You know what I'm Joel, but niggas was tight, bro. Right, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like niggas was tight. You know what I'm saying? Like because they like who this little motherfucker? And I understand, but that's how I felt. You know what I'm saying? Because I I am a young motherfucker and I'm here to fuck shit up. And if you want to be the man, you gotta you gotta go for the title. Ti always called himself the king of the south. Everybody got offended, but he had a he had a reign where he, he could have said that. And, and he and he had and he definitely had um the right to say it. Right. He had hit records and he was nice and yeah. and the time he was coming out. So I feel like you know what me and Ola do. You know what I'm saying? Is for this tan boy movement shit it's, it's it's not just for Latinos But it started as a Latino movement mm-hmm. So when people Like when, when you put the tweet out Like oh what do you want to ask Well they got somebody said Can black people be tan boys <laughs> And I get that shit over time man I'm like yeah bro Like if you a real motherfucker You a tan boy You know what I'm saying Like, like that's all it's about Yes 
the, the movement started as with Latinos, but it, it's, it's bigger than that now. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like it's it's a cultural thing. It's not a a fashion movement. It's not a fucking a, a, a movement of young niggas just being rebels. It's a cultural movement, tan boys. You know what right. I'm saying? And 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 you don't have to be one particular race to connect with it. You could just be a real motherfucker in your race. Right. And that's what it is. It's not the color of my skin why we call each other tan boys. Right. It's the blood thing. It's it's another word because we didn't want to be called spicks. We didn't want to be called them Spanish niggas no more. Right. So instead of me being called a Spanish nigga because I'm not Spanish because I'm not from Spain. You know what I'm right. saying? I'm Latino. I said, fuck that. We're going to call yourself a tan boys. Do you get offended by people calling you Spanish? Hell yeah. Because, really? Hell okay. yeah. See, I'm still stuck on saying that. I got to get nah, over that. No, no, but not offended in a way like like, 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 oh man, fuck is you doing? But like, Latino is more politically correct. But, but, yeah. Matter of fact, I'm not offended. That. I, I, <laughs> I, it's just, it's, but it's just like, I, I'm offended because of how Spain looks at us. Not right, the, not right. if you get it wrong. It's because of how Spain look at us. Like we crumb. Right. Like, look at, look at, like we're on, we're beneath them. Yeah. That's I get offended in that kind of aspect. Not if somebody, because I still say, yo, I speak Spanish. Yeah. I don't say I speak Latin. You know what I'm saying right. so, but it's just the. The Spain, like the, the thought of them, like how they feel like they they're inferior and they're royal to every other fucking Hispanic race. Right, but do you feel like Puerto Rico kind of gets shit on by like the overall Latino community, or like doesn't get as much respect or something? I I think I think Puerto Rico gets a, I think Dominican Republic get shit on more than them. Okay. And I'm half PR yeah. and I'm half PR. I think PR got a good ride. I think PR is is, is great. I think you know what I'm saying PR is protected by the United States of America. Right. Like Puerto Rican motherfuckers complain all the time. <laughs> yeah. like, I tell you that firsthand. They always complaining. Right. Dominican niggas get shit on a lot. Right. And Dominican people, like my dad, came in this country illegally, and they come in this country to be hard motherfucking workers and raise families, and, and do whatever the fuck they gotta do. And I feel like Dominicans don't really get their proper respect as much as Puerto Ricans. Right. Nah, they don't. Puerto Ricans is, is, is definitely the most superior out of the both Latino groups. Okay. What about the Mexicans, though? Because we got infinite... We, we don't really have that many Puerto Rican people out here. It's all... If you see a Spanish person or a Latino-looking person in, in California, they're almost certainly Mexican. Right. Uh, but are there Mexican people in Harlem or in New yeah, York? Yeah, but that they ain't many, respected though. at all. You don't think so? Hell no. Why not? Because they're the workers and shit? Because... It be, and I, 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 I tell people all the time over here, when I be fucking my Mexican bitches out here, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> they, they look like the bitches from from like the novelas, meaning like the um the, the soap, soap opera. Yeah, yeah. So I be telling them, I'll be like, yo, listen. <laughs> I be telling them, I'll be like, yo, listen, um, y'all don't look like the Mexicans from New York. Yeah. Like the Mexicans from New York are darker, they're shorter, they come from the mountains. <laughs> y'all look like the motherfuckers from the novelas, I be telling them. You know what I'm saying? Like, but the Mexicans from the East Coast, them niggas don't get no respect, bro. Yeah. They work in pizza thing, shops, right? they work in pizza shops, they be smacking them niggas in the back of the head. <laughs> they always fucking drunk, fighting in the corner of the streets, man. You I, got love I, for them? Hell yeah. yeah? Okay. Yo, bro, I love the Mexican culture so motherfucking much, man. It's 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 almost Disgusting. Right. Who does it, man? Tacos. Out in California, you gotta have such a, a appreciation for it. Oh you man. See it everywhere. Yo, you know? those people are so amazing, man. Like, yo, like they, yo, they. It's almost to a point where they show me more love than my own culture. Yeah. In some aspects. You feel like you're like a voice for them as well. As Absolutely, I'm a voice with? for all Hispanics. Yeah. And they fall into that. I'm a right. voice for all Latinos. Yo, bro, I, I did a show in fucking Mexico last year. Oh really? Okay. In Mexico City. Sold 250 tickets in that bitch. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, to do that shit in the East Coast is cool. Yeah. But to do that shit in a country where they don't even speak English and they don't even have internet like that. That's big. Was fucking amazing to me, bro. I, I had a moment of, like, like of like of yo, this was crazy. Like, out of all the shit I've, I've accomplished thus far, that was one of the biggest feats because I'm like, wow, be like, I'm in a different country of my people. Right, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And and these people are really looking at me and they trying to dress like me and they trying to talk like me and they saying tan boys and bodega and pop. So these are real fans. They knew the words and they all that shit. They knew the shit, okay. bro. Hell, Hell yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it, that shit was surreal to me. 250 motherfuckers in that Is shit. Is that the only show that you ever played in, like, Latin or South America? Only show, yeah. Okay. I never been nowhere else. I've just been to Mexico. Yeah, okay. But that shit was... Amazing, bro. you tour like crazy. Yeah. You always know that that was important from an early point in your career? Or Touring, what? yes, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Because, um, you know, people, a lot of artists don't understand that, you know, this is where you... um, it, when, when an artist can tour, that means he has a co-following. Right. So that means that n- it doesn't matter when the radio stops playing you, if you have a, a co-following where you can tour for, for the rest of your life, you'll always be straight. Right. You got a lot of artists that they rely solely on the, on the radio. And eventually the radio will stop playing you if, you if you ain't paying that money, if you ain't hot, right? Yeah. So they'll stop playing you. So now you've built a, a fan base, but... Radio fan base are not the same as a following yeah. because radio just listens to what's on the radio. It's a guy who knows your lyrics. Yeah, exactly. Knows, knows a song. Yeah. So once you get fucking booted off the radio, it's like, what's next? So I knew 
it's it's good to have both, mm-hmm. right? It's good to have that because the radio brings a lot of money. But what's 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 more, um, the radios for the moment and and and, and the, the the internet and the and the touring and the, that's the, and the real following. Fan base. That's the future. Fan base. Yeah, 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 that's the core. Like niggas like Eminem could go platinum. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I have not have not have a radio record. Like uh, there's a, there's a few artists that can do that. You know what I'm right. saying? So I always wanted. I gotta hit the road, and I love the road, bro. I love that shit. Like I love being on the road. I love being with the fans. I kick with the fans in the parking lot. Like they ain't gotta pay for meet and greets. Right. I go kick it with the motherfuckers. What are the best areas for you besides New York? Cali. Okay. It's amazing. You know what I'm saying? Um, Arizona. Uh huh. Uh, New Mexico. Yeah. What so, was the tour you just finished? You believe with? I was on tour with um a, a kid named Young Simi. Yeah. He's from Miami. We had him on here. Yeah, yeah, He's Young hot. Simi. Shout out to Young Simi, Simi. Yeah. yeah. So me and Simi hit the road. It was just a West Coast run. Yeah. Just to see how it was and shit like that. We hit Arizona. We hit Texas. Uh, um. Yeah, man. Like um. Definitely Texas, Arizona, New Mexico. The more you guys Hispanic just load up a van and go. Area. Well, this time we we had SUVs, but I I've I've done the whole tour buses and all that shit too. Yeah. But since this was a short run, like I just said, fuck it. Let me let me save my money. Yeah. Because the, the tour bus buses is like a couple thousand dollars a day, right? Yo, I, I, when I went on tour with um Underachievers in November, in October, I had a mini tour bus and I was on the road for five weeks and my bus came out in total twenty one thousand dollars. Jesus. Yeah, and, and and it housed ten people. It wasn't even a big. The, the, the 12 There wasn't the big 40 foot bus It was like 25 foot bus And yeah. I fucking spent $20,000 on that bus And yeah. I remember going on tour With Flatbush Zombies And we had the big bus And that bus in five weeks Was $50,000 yeah. That we had to all put in together So them shits is very costly But you know It go hand in hand Because you know A rapper likes to be Fucking comfortable and cozy yeah. Before he performs Well it's good do, Well do you come back From tour feeling still Like relatively refreshed Because you got a bed to sleep in And stuff You don't feel like A total piece of shit After nah, the nah. tour Nah it, it, it feel good to come home Them yeah. few days Them yeah. first few days It feel good to come home Get on the bed and relax But then you like Man I want to be in this shit no you get more, antsy. Man. Yeah, I want to get the fuck out of here, man. Yo, you're sleeping on the floor, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. When you're touring, you feel like you're doing stuff. Yeah, Going exactly. from city to city, like time moves differently. Yeah, oh, like totally, you're, yeah. you're seeing new people. Like you're, that shit is just fire, bro. Like just being on tour is just amazing. Like when I'm in New York, I'm just recording. Yeah, you know what I'm saying like that's all I'm doing, and it gets boring. Like, I like to hit the road. I like to meet new people. I like to shake hands. I like to fuck different like, bitches. It gives yeah. you the experiences <laughs> that you then get to go write about too. You know, like exactly. You stay at home and you don't have anything new to talk about. Nah, you don't. You yeah, exactly. You want you want to you know you want to broaden your inspirations, you got to go out there, man, see yeah. different people and see what it is, man, for real. And hey, when do you start to feel like you started really, like, getting cracking, like, in the sense that people started talking about you like you were that dude who was going to pop off and shit? Because there uh, was a moment, like, where you really, like, your status got elevated hardcore a few years back. Right. Yeah. Uh, uh, I would say 2012. Okay. Yeah, I would say 2012. When, when you met Yams? Was that directly Yams. related? So how directly did, related. How did this all play out? Uh... Well, um, there was a home, we 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 have mutual friends. So one of the, one of our mutual friends, um, he always wanted to put me and Yams together when Yams was just East Side Stevie, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and then when the ASAP shit started kicking off in 2011, he was following me on in Twitter, and I didn't right, even yeah. know he was following me. You know what I'm saying? I just found out he was following me. So I'm like, oh shit, this thing is following me, um, because during that time, um, Rocky had came with Yams. With the mutual friend to my studio uptown to record a record for Smoke Dizza. Okay. And the shit record, the record was called Four Loco. It was back in the day record that Smoke no, I Dizza. That one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They did that shit in my spot. This is before everything took off. Where right when this is literally because I remember they were still shooting the video for the Four Loco record and Rocky was showing us the Peso video. So right, this, okay. it wasn't even out yet. Um. So during that duration of time, you know what I'm saying? I remember Yans came to come to the studio at that first time, and he was very, very quiet. And he had his, the iceberg on. His Twitter name was Eastside Stevie. It was Eastside Stevie. <laughs> yeah, on all caps. You know what I'm saying? That, yeah. And he still had the real nigga Tumblr. Mm-hmm. Um, Greatest Tumblr name of all time. Yeah, and he was, you know, quiet, very quiet, very. But I always thought he was like a gangster, cause you know what I'm saying? He 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 had the tattoos on his hand, and he had the tattoos on his neck. And shot. I'm like, I'm this nigga, so he into some shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But really, he didn't speak like that. So then when he left. You know, I just randomly hit the nigga up one day on Twitter, like, yo, what's up, bro, bro? Like, you know, um, good to meet you, bro. Um, y'all can just keep on killing. And he replied, like, yo, um, you know, the homie told me to fuck with y'all. I've been fucking with you, Ben, for a minute, bro, before all this shit. So, listen, any plugs you need, 
yo, like, I got you. Yeah. So when I read that shit, like, I'm like, wow. Like, because up up to that point, like, you know, I had the talent and I had the drive, but you I just didn't. had the connections, I had right? no connection. So uh. this was a dude who was with the, the, the most hottest dude at the time coming up, and he's taking time out of his fucking day to acknowledge me. So yeah. that shit just gave me a boost like none other. So I remember telling Ola, like, just being excited, bro, like, being like a little kid in the candy store. Like, yo, Yams, hit me back. Yams, hit me back. And then do that. Send the nigga my number, and then we just built the relationship, man, a dying bond of brotherhood, you know what I'm saying, because yeah. of that initial conversation. And the, I remember the first time he came to my crib, he came with a 40, and he was there till like 6 in the morning. This was like in 2011, and since then, man, I've been like, you know, just the dude that we would go to for consulting. We would go to him, like, yo, Yang, we about to release this record, what you think? We would hang out with the nigga, we would, we would eat with the nigga. It wasn't all the time, you know what I'm right. saying, but it was enough times that... You would love a nigga. Yeah. There was enough times that, you know what I'm saying, like he would miss, you would miss a nigga around. You know what I'm saying? Like, cause Yams was the type of dude, and everybody would tell you this. Like, he'll be hanging out with you for like two weeks straight, and then you won't see him for two months. Yeah. He just disappeared. Yeah. From anybody that was really with Yams, know that was his character. Cause right. Yams was just like that. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, I would say um, once, you know, the homie put his arm around me and started, you know, having people, having people, um, Having people, t- you know, having people tell me like, "Yo, Bams is that next nigga." Like everybody really started showing respect and started seeing what it was, and, and it was special because Yams is Dominican and Puerto Rican, mm-hmm. just like me. Yeah. So, I, so he he got my movement and my vision. What we he was trying, what we trying to do for our people. Right. You know what I'm saying, and it's fucked up that you know him being a Puerto Rican and Dominican, you know he had to go out. You know what I'm saying because like like you said, we don't have too many. Right. You know what I'm saying so. Yeah, I would say like in 2012, bro. But what's up with like the tragedies that keep hitting like the New York fucking Latino heroes? Because Big Pun, like, that was a crazy thing. That affected people like. Yeah, you nigga. Yo, I wish I could say that's the first time somebody fell asleep in their chair here. That's <laughs> what Who else? Uh, uh, fucking the Wi Fi's funeral. Oh, nice. He nodded off for a second, yeah. Oh, um, Pun, yeah. Pun was, um,. I was fucked up, man. I was fucked up too. I was a young kid when but that you happened. You didn't really understand the impact of that at the time. Until nah, later. nah. Yeah. Um, Pum was because believe it or not, yo, Pum was one of those dudes that niggas ain't respect till he died. Yeah, you feel that way? I, okay. I, I know that for sure. Yeah. Pum was one of those dudes that niggas was like, it wasn't really feeling him. He was just a Latino nigga. Same, same thing like me. Yeah. But the only difference is he had a hit, hit record. He had a hit, hit. Yeah. And he went platinum. So only, that was the only difference. And, and he, but it was the same shit. Like, look at this Latino ass nigga. Yeah. So when all these other rappers start coming around saying Pum was this and Pum was that, I'm sure they wasn't saying. When he was alive. Right. It That's was just the, the case. People it, always got the rose colored glasses for people once they die. Exactly. Because you know? people are always like, oh, like, can you imagine if Biggie was still alive? I'm like, yo, you know who's still alive? Like, LL Cool J. Yeah. You yeah. know, it's like, <laughs> it, 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 I'm kind of glad in a way that you didn't get to see Biggie at 50. You know, it, it probably wouldn't have been totally pretty. Nah, probably. And that's the same. Like, like I would have, I'd be thinking about that shit too a lot. Like, if Pum was still alive, like he probably would have been doing reggae thong right now. Yeah. You know what Cause he probably he's already went that. platinum on hip hop level. Like, what is it left to do? Like, yo, yeah. go get into some other shit. Probably would have been a fucking actor. Right. You know what I'm saying? Probably would have lost mad weight and been dumb skinny. Or like we all love Cam, but like, do you listen to a new Cam tape when it comes out? Mm, mm, nah. You don't gotta say it, but yeah. <laughs> uh, not, not, but it's, it's yo, bro, it's not even Cam, it's just with everybody. Like we worship fifty. I don't listen to a new 50 tape. If, yeah. if there are new 50 tapes, I don't really know, you know? No it, no rapper ever makes it through. Like, Jay-Z is one of the very few that you can look at him like he made it through the gauntlet. He still has a good image. Never really lost his respect. We still look at him like he did it. Like, yeah. he made it through respectably, yeah. you know, into his 40s. Yeah. Like, that's, that's the hardest thing in the world. I mean, yeah, man. Like, Cam just released, Cam just dropped some record, though, that he was, I think it was the You Wasn't There record. Okay. That he's showing, like, the collages of... You ever seen the video? It just uh, dropped like not yet, a month think, and a half no. ago. It was like she was like showing collages of. It was old killer, yo, and I lo- that it just came out like a month ago. I was like, wow, like really? this is fire, yeah. Okay. But you know, like with Cam, like, and I'm sure a lot of people will tell you that know him, like, he probably don't give a fuck about rapping. Exactly, anymore, that's the problem. He don't. He don't care. Why, he don't so, have to care so why about. why would I be? Thirsty for a cam record, or why would I be like stop what I'm doing for a cam record if he don't give a fuck about yeah. r- rapping? Because I mean, no he don't put out records for years and years at a time too. Yeah. So, you know, so like, I mean, I think he knows that. You know, so I think he, yeah, I think he knows what the fuck he's doing, and I think he's, he's good. He, he's good enough that he knows he's a fucking legend, and he yeah. paved the way for a lot of motherfuckers and made millions of dollars, and he don't give a fuck if niggas listen to his shit or not. Right. Yeah. A hundred percent. Yeah. So how do you? Uh, so how's your career proceed from there? You you link up with Yams, and he's kind of got your back and stuff. Did you ever go on tour with them, or you were just around them a lot? Yeah, or? just around them a lot. You know what I'm saying we never get the we never got to go on tour. 
um, there was supposed to be a tour with me, Ferg, and Flatbush Zombies, but that never went into play. Um, and then me and Flatbush end up going on tour, and then Ferg end up doing his own tour. But that was the initial tour that was supposed to happen, me, Ferg, and, and Flatbush. Um, Cause we were all in the same agency at one time, right. represented by the same booking agent. Uh-huh. What agent was that? Um, Josh Dick, he's from the agency group. Oh, the agency. He's group. he's actually Flatbush Zombies manager right now, and he's working with Mac Lamore and all them dudes in Seattle and shit. His name is Josh Dick. He had Yellow Wolf. He had me. He had Flatbush. He had. He oh, keep, does he manage Mac Lamore too? He's he's a part of the management comp- group yeah, that manages okay. them. He had fucking. Um, he's huge. Yeah, Josh Dickens, he was my booking agent one time. He used to work, like I said, he used to work for the agency group. They had Peter Schwartz that was doing shit for Wiz and Mac Miller. So we were all in that bunch, you know right. what I'm saying? Like, So that was the initial tour of the plan. Like, yo, you know what I mean? It's going to be bams. Flat with zombies and Ferg. And I remember when we was when Ferg was shooting the work video uptown and I came through and Rocky was there and Rocky pulled me to the side and he was like, Yo, bam, y'all I'm gonna take you on tour, I'm gonna take you on me, I'm gonna take you on Ola on tour and shit like that. But then that didn't come into play. Then he took ended up taking Schoolboy and mm-hmm. Danny Brown on his first tour. But yeah, I mean, it, it was talked about, but it never happened, you know what I'm saying? So what about the the zombies and and Ferg and shit? Like those are two of the dudes that you are two of the acts that you have the biggest uh, relationship with and some huge records with. Uh, yeah. What's your relationship with those guys like? Homies. Yeah. Uh, homies, man. Um, Flabbers, my guys. You know what I'm saying? We got a we got like four records together. You know what I'm saying? All have over millions of views and. Yeah. Um, Fur, we have like three records together. All have over millions of views. Um. Me and Ferg was in the process of 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 of, of releasing a mixtape uh-huh. together called Trapping in a Bodega. It never came into fruitation because at the time he was about to be ready to drop his album. Then you know um, I was over here doing my thing. You know right. what I'm saying? Like so, it never really came together. We people wanted us to sell it. You know what I'm saying? We was going to certain record labels. They wanted us to sell it. We didn't want to sell it, so it just never happened. So that shit is literally just collecting dust. We got a whole bunch of fucking bangers. And I remember I spoke to Fur one time, like, yo, Fur, man, what the fuck I'm going to do with these records, bro? So yo, Ben, let's just do this shit over, yo, because I just feel like I'm so good now. Like, <laughs> I'm so, I'm way better than I am before. So I would never violate that man yeah, and yeah, just release yeah. records if he felt like he's not good enough. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I'd rather just either never do them again and just leave them there or just revisit it. Right. You know what I'm saying? But those, those, those are the guys, man. I know what I mean, I spoke to, um, when I was in LA a few days ago, we FaceTime with Twelvey. Uh, I speak to um, um, Flatbush um, ever so often, Juice especially. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. yeah, man. You know, good guy. They they've they done a lot for me. You know but, what I'm saying? But so what happened like with the whole movement? Like it seemed like there was so much steam coming up behind this whole ASAP thing, and everybody like you who was just kind of under this umbrella, and then this shit happens with Yams, and then everything changes. Can you tell us about that from your perspective? I, I think it's just it's just because like what you said, like Yams was just the bridge. Mm. So, excuse me, a lot of, um, he was the, the connection of, to everybody. So he's gone now. So, like, normally, it's almost going to be like, all right, well, you know, I'm only cool with him because Jans was cool with him and vice versa. So, even though you're going to be cool with the niggas, but the, the person who, who introduced y'all in the first place is gone. Yeah. So if that relationship between y'all is not strong enough... Then y'all just gonna drift away. You see, like with Flatbush Zombies, like Yan introduced me to Flatbush Zombies, and just so happened we became very, very, very close. Right. They took me on tour. We've done a ton of shows together. We've done a ton of records together. I, I've hanged out with them a ton of times. So it was a different situation. Same thing with Ferg. When Ferg in the beginning, like Ferg was always in the crib. We was always recording. You know what I'm saying like we 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 done did shows together, all that shit. But then you know Ferg just. Exploded, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. he's gone, you know what I mean? So, you know, his numbers is changing, you know what I mean? You catch him when you catch him, you know what I mean? You <laughs> yeah, respect yeah, yeah. it. But, um, yeah, and and, and, and it's because the Yams is gone, bro. You right. know what I'm saying? So a lot of shit, yo, shit is fucking weird now, bro. Yeah. That he's been gone. Like, it's fucking weird. Like, just, just the, um, the reaction is different. Like, like I, I, I was in, um, the Roosevelt Hotel when, in the MTV Movie Awards and, um, Rocky, I was there with Rocky, me and, and Rocky seen me. He was like, yo, hola, where Bams at? He's a nigga right here. 
I'm like, he was like, yo, Ben, yo, smoke one up with me, bro. Yo, it's been a minute, bro. Damn, yo, damn. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, it's always that love when we see each other. Because right. we all from Harlem. We all New York niggas. And, 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 and because of that foundation, we games. Like, when they see me, I think they think about Yams. Yeah, 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 exactly. Automatically, yeah. they think about Yams. Like, damn, you know, Yams and Bam together was trouble. Like, right. that's what they, you know what I'm saying? So it's always fucking love when I see them brothers. You know what I'm right. saying? It's always love. You know what I mean? But, you know, you let the birds fly. You know what I'm right. saying? Like, I'm flying, they flying, you know, and, when, and, and and that's, it's beautiful when we're flying in different areas and we all come together. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, in the beginning, in 2012, it was all coming together and we were all really... We, we used to literally, like, be in shows together. Rocky would be like, yo, come through, yo, we out here. I go through with Flatbush. We all be... We'll all be mama to the same shows. But like I said, you know, people started getting bigger. People started doing more things over here and over here and just... You know, just separate, but not separate because it's problems. Just separate because yeah. you know we got different career paths. Right. What about on a personal level when when you found out about Yams? Can you tell us what that was like? <sighs> that shit was sad, bro. It was it was just it was an extremely sad day, man. Um, I was it, I found out in the morning, like at eight in the morning. I was with my son. You know what I mean? Like we'll just wake up in the morning with my son, like every morning. And um, I look at my phone and I get a text message from somebody that I haven't spoke to in so long. So. Person like yo, just just like this. They just text me like, yo, that nigga Yams dead. It's like that. So I'm like, what? So then I immediately go on Twitter, cause you know that's how you find yeah. out if shit is real. And then to to be old, like shit, shit is real. You know what I'm saying? So I, call, I immediately call Ola. Ola was sleeping. This is like 8:30 in the morning. I'm like, yo, oh, this nigga Yams is dead, bro. It's like that. I'm like, yo, this nigga Yams is dead, bro. Oh, like what? The fuck you talking about? Yo, he's dead. Oh, he dead. Yo, I'm I'm on the Twitter right now. Oh, we, we hung up. Oh, caught a few people that was there that day with him, and they confirmed it. Like, yeah, that nigga gone, bro. And so, what was what, the last time you talked to him or yeah. saw him before that? Last time I talked to the nigga, bro. Last time I saw the nigga was at Rocky's house in Soho. <laughs> um, because what's crazy is that, um, RCA wanted to sign me, right? So Brian Leach, who um. Who signed Rocky to Polo Grounds? Um, Ferg introduced me to Brian Leach, and we were talking about, like I was telling you earlier, releasing the the, the album me and Ferg had together. So Brian Leach like, yo, you know we gotta do it through some label. I'm saying like, yo Ben, who you sign with? Like, I ain't signed nobody. Well, you ain't signed nobody. It's around a time where 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 um I had a radio, I had a record on the radio on Hundred Ninety Seven going crazy, called Don Francisco. So everybody thought I was signed. You know what I'm saying like, I'm like nah, I ain't signed. A word, we gotta bring you over here. So he wanted to sign me to Polo Grounds. You know what I'm saying? RCA wanted to sign me to Polo. I mean, Brian Leach wanted to sign me to Polo Grounds. So I remember last time I seen Yams was to discuss that deal that was about to take place in Rocky's crib. You know what I mean? Just to get an okay from niggas, see what's going on and shit like that. And that was the last time I seen the nigga. You know what I'm saying? And um, um, you know, I still spoke to the nigga often. You know what I'm saying? Because then he was back and forth. To LA a lot, you know what I mean? And then when I seen them, I remember he was smoking weed. And I ain't never remember Yans for smoking weed. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like me and Yan was just a, me and Yan would smoke cigarettes and drink honey. So when I see him smoking weed, I'm busting his chops like, yo man, what the fuck is you doing, bro? Like, why you smoking for, bro? And he's like, Yeah, come on, bruh, bruh, don't blow my eye, bruh, bruh. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That was Yams and shit like that. So um then, you know, from there he left back to LA. And I, I, I remember leaving, looking at him when I seen him in Rocky Crib, and he was just skinny. And he, I'm not going to say he didn't look good, you know what I'm saying? But I'm going to be like, he was changing. I could see that he was changing. I could see that he wasn't the same kind of game. He was skinny, but he wasn't working out. Like, it wasn't. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Exactly. He was the, you know, the, what's going on? Like, you eating good, bro? So, um, yeah, that was the last time I seen the brother, man. You know what I mean? I you were never him. into the, the lean and the pills nah, and all that shit? Never, no? never, never, okay. never, never, bro. I mean, I, you know. Lean, I tried before pills, yeah. You know what I mean, but not to the effect Never where, crazy nah, really, yeah. hell no. I, I can't really get addicted to nothing. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, not even money. You right. know what I mean? Like, I just feel like, you know, this shit is, this shit is the devil, bro, being addicted. Yeah. Being addicted, you know what I'm saying? Like, and it's real and it's so powerful. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and you know, we sometimes when you when you got a homie or you got a brother who who's addicted to something, man, it's, 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 it's a touchy subject because, like, I, I'm around people who's a, who have addiction, so yeah. I'm telling niggas, I'm getting mad, niggas. Like, what the fuck is you doing? And literally, what I know is that 
that's not making it better. Yeah. There's so many ways to 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 get them shits, to get them niggas off addictions or try to talk to them niggas. But you know, we're not doctors. We, this ain't new to this is new to us. So we don't we're talking to niggas the way we would think people would talk to us. And it feels impossible. It does because you feel like you're not gonna change. Exactly. You've and, been doing this for a while. You don't. You're not gonna you know change. No matter what I say. And 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 and. and I, I'm happy enough. I smoke a lot of cigarettes. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying, I, so maybe that's an addiction. But I'm happy enough. I never got. I never had a real, real addiction. You right. know what I'm saying, like because it can easily happen. You know what I'm yeah. saying. But I, I'm, I'm, I'm happy enough that it's never happened to me. You know what I'm saying. Why but, do you think? It, like, were your parents addicted to anything, or is that in your family? Nah, it's not in my family. But you know what's sad is that wasn't in Yan's family either. Yeah. You dig? Because I know Yan's moms. Yam's mom is a beautiful woman. Yam's mom is a hard-working woman, a woman who worked two jobs. Yam's had a good home. Yam's came from a good home. People don't know that. A lot of people think Yam's like a derelict yeah. who's out in and out of jail. No, Yam's came from a good mother, a good dad. About her a lot, yeah. yeah, you know what I'm saying? So, so, and she would stress that to me. She would be like, you know, people think that he, this my son was homeless. Like, my son didn't have good... He, she's like, yo, we have a big family. Mm. And my son, we have like 50 relatives of Dominican Republic in this here. So people don't get that. So it, it's more of an, it's, it has, it, it really has to do with them, bro. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And who they're around. Right. Because he was the per- and that's why it's more sad. You know what I'm saying? Like with Yans, because he didn't come, he didn't come up with a mom that was cracked out. He right. didn't come up with a mom that was in and out of jail. You know what I mean? He came from a respectable home. And he just, you know, just, it got to him, you know what I'm saying? And it just, I don't know, man. That shit was crazy, man. Do you see way too many kids in, in Harlem or in your life day to day that are like fucked up on the same shit? Like fucked up on all this it, crazy it, shit that's trendy up. now? It's fucked up that niggas be like using the homie name. Like that shit is like good, my nigga. Yeah, like, yeah. like, yeah, we pouring up some yams. Yeah. That shit is corny, my nigga. That niggas is goofballs. You dig? Because, and, and I'm not saying you goofball because you want to do that. You could do whatever the fuck you want to do. Right. You know what I mean? But, like, don't be using that man name for that shit, bro. That man gone, bro. Yeah. That shit is corny, my nigga. That whole, that whole, yo, like, just, just the whole, like, yeah, yo, I'll do it because in Yam's name. Nah, my nigga. Don't yeah. do that. You know what I'm saying? Because he got mother, he got a mother, he got a father. He got, he got cousins and sisters that they don't do that. And they on Instagram and they watching that shit, bro. Yeah. So care for them motherfuckers. Is that disrespectful when somebody's at Yams Day drinking lean and shit? Of, yo, yo, bro, that that happened. I, know, I don't want to yeah. say nobody's name. I heard about it. That bit, happened. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And and I spoke to the I spoke to my I spoke to Yams moms, and she was beside herself because of that shit. Yeah. And, and it really fucked up. And that's what I'm saying. People don't realize what the fuck they doing. Right. To the to the family of that man. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I'm on the phone with with Yams mom when she's telling me. You know, Bodega likes, they don't know what they did, mm-hmm. how I felt. Like, come on, my nigga. Like, yo, we here, we here, we here to fight addiction. Y'all niggas pulling up lean, my nigga? Yeah. Y'all niggas is goofballs. Y'all niggas is bozos. Yeah. Y'all niggas, and then, like, and on top of that, y'all know that nigga moms is dead. But it, it, like I said, it's, it's just the mentality of the addiction that they have right. and not giving a fuck about nobody else but themselves. Yeah. And they don't realize how they hurting people. And that was fucked up. Yeah, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, that shit was, niggas was definitely doing that. Yeah. I, I, I even told Tati, I said, yo, Tati, I'm sorry that I brought a bottle of Henny on stage. Right. Because I thought maybe that would offend her. Right. She's like, no. She's like, you crazy? She's like, I was going to get Henny to sponsor it. <laughs> yeah. Like, you good. That's what my son drank. She's like, right. she's like, it's just the other shit. She didn't say shit, but she's like, it's just the other thing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's the other drink. You know what I'm saying? She's like, it's, it's, it's the marijuana. She said, nigga, she's on stage and niggas are smoking. Yeah. And, it, and you know what's crazy? It's, and it's not even the main niggas that's doing it. It's the other niggas, the right. side yeah, niggas yeah, on the yeah. side doing it. You know what I'm saying? And that's what's more fucked up. Yeah. And that's the weird part is that Yams ain't around to like tell people how to act. Like I feel like that was kind of the father figure in your whole scene out there, right? Yams was just the nigga that, yeah, he was just, hey, what you doing, bro? bro? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, Yams is like... Uh, it's like the what would Yams do shit. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, Yams was a dude that was like, nah, bro, you can't do that. That's right. corny. Don't do that. Like, I remember Yams told me a story that um, they wanted Rocky to fucking be in a, uh, one of them, uh, a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle movie. They wanted him to do the soundtrack. And nigga Yams was like, we ain't doing no fucking Ninja Turtle movie. <laughs> really? Yeah, he wanted to do the soundtrack. Well, what? what could be more street than like living in the sewer in New York, right? <laughs> I would have done it. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. that would have been a big ass check. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? But that was just Yams. Like, Yams was just a, nah, we ain't doing that. And go Ninja. Listen. Yeah. Go, yeah, go Ninja, go Ninja, go. Oh, hey, rest in peace, man. That's some, oh, I'm glad to hear you talk about it. We just had Joey Fats in here the other day spilling some, some all his memories. And Yams. Dad. 
Dash. Too. And Dash. Yeah, we always, you know. Shout out to Dash. But that's the crazy thing is that, like, we could have a lot of fucking rappers on here that we haven't even had yet that would be able to sit here and talk about yams like that because he affected a lot of different dudes who are still relevant, you know? Yeah, he yeah, um he did. um And, 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 and a lot of people, and, and he affected a lot of dudes, but he had relations with very few. Mm. Don't get it twisted. Like. Well, we're lucky because we've had the, a lot of the very few, I think. Cool. You know? yeah. yeah, cool. Yeah, I know a name, lot of people try to name, false claim that The niggas shit, you yeah. name, like Fats and Dash, yeah. valid. You know what I'm saying? But Yams affected a lot of motherfuckers. Mm-hmm. Yams was cool with a lot of niggas. A lot of niggas. That's why people loved him so much because he was just the dude. He wasn't... He knew how popular he was and how powerful ASAP is and he, that never... He never used that against nobody. He could be right. a regular nigga. Right. Like, um, I remember one time we was downtown... He came with the Versace suit on, head to toe suede Versace suit, and we going to um a spot downtown where Chris Brown and Drake was fighting. I forgot the spot called in Manhattan. That day, this was the same day. It wasn't that the happened. same day, oh, but it was that club. club. Okay. I don't know if it's still there, but anyways, we going down there and shit like that, and um we waiting online and shit, right? But, but then we trying to move past the line of the VIP. So now we on the VIP line. We a little bit speedy going back to the to the front, and then they like, yo, what's going on? I I got yams here. Ah, yo, he got a sweatsuit on, so he really can't come. So while they telling him this shit, they're playing, um, um, they're playing a Rocky record in the background. Yeah. So we look at this nigga like, yo, oh, like you tell him, my, you'll be like, yo, listen, my man suit costs five thousand. Yeah. Right. So Yams is already drunk. So niggas is like, yo, nigga Yams is like, yo, you playing my fucking record right now, bro? And you yeah. tell me I can't come in. What's the minimum that I gotta come in? Oh, you gotta get um four bottles. How much is the four bottles? Two thousand dollars. Yeah, I mean fuck it, yo. So Yans put out his wallet and he gave him the card, his card. So I'm like, yo, we out. So while we're walking, I'm realizing I'm like, yo, man, Yams, yo, fuck this nigga. And I grabbed him, I'm like, yo, get your card back, bro. I ain't gonna let you spend two thousand dollars in this whack ass club, my nigga. And we bounced. Yeah. That was, but that was Yams shit. Like he was, you know what I'm saying? Like he was was good. He was um, so, that's my cousin Dread. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um. I remember that day, you know what I'm saying? Like, but like I said, niggas like Dash and Joey, they they all gonna have their own stories. And you know, Yams was, like I said, he affected a lot of people, but he was very he was close to a very few people, right. especially rap niggas. You know what I'm saying? Besides his brothers, ASAP. Well, I'm glad we got to talk about him because you know he obviously had a huge impact on a whole lot of fucking people out there. He kept the whole thing positive too. It sounds like you know. Very positive, very positive, and that's what we miss about it. Yeah. That's what we miss. We miss the positivity. We miss the um. But have you had a hard time like? Focusing like on your career, like was it hard for you to make music for a while and stuff after all that? Nah, it 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 drove me to make music because uh-huh. I because I felt like that's that's how, that's how to honor him. Yeah, yeah. You know I mean that's that's the way to honor him. That's the way to show him that yo this shit is still alive and well. You know what I'm saying? Like this shit gonna get lit. Um, it, it was the driving force. You know what I'm saying? Like um, and to this day, man, like like you know like he, like he he like I said, I can only speak for myself, but you know like. He he was just a huge inspiration to me. You know what I'm saying? Like, because ev- I would listen to everything Yans would say. Yo, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Yans would Yans would tell me like anything, and I would take that shit to the grave. Like, yo, he's right, and I'm gonna ride with it. You know what I'm saying? So now we ain't really got that. You know what I'm saying? Like we do. You know what I'm saying? Me and Ola, we now we it's more like we listen to ourselves mostly. You know what I'm saying? Like, but you know he he it, it was definitely hard in the beginning. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I remember crying like a baby, man, for like 24 hours. You know what I'm saying? Like, just when, when I finally realized when that man was gone, like, you know, I went to both the fucking funerals, yeah. the, the days that they had. I went to the, 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 the burial. It was in the snow. Yeah. He got buried in St. Raymond Cemetery. Yeah. Dead. Like, I was dead. I was dead when they lowered that man casket in the ground. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I was dead for my man. You know what I mean? Like, I had to be there for that man. You know what I'm saying? So, um... It was, it was, it was def- like I said, it, it just like, it felt like a big ass hole, you know what I mean? Like a gap. Yeah. Especially for New York. Yeah. It was just whack, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, hey. but slowly but surely we, we get back there. How do you feel when people say uh, that New York fell off or that New York's whack now or whatever? I have, I have 40 ounce van in here and he was kind of like, you know, New York's sort of a bad place right now. Why would he say that? I don't know. He just said he didn't think there was enough uh, talent coming out that he was really excited about. I don't, they don't he make, did mention you know, Flatbush and talk about them and stuff. He mentioned Dave East too, you know? It don't make sense. Yeah. So because you, you just named two people who's doing their thing. Yeah. What you mean New York ain't good? I asked him, I'm like, you think that people in New York don't claim their W's, like in the sense that like 
a lot of people when they sit around and talk about New York, they're not going to mention Nikki and they're not going to mention Rocky. It's like once somebody comes out in New York, people just take them for granted. And right. they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, but but they're mainstream. They're mainstream. <laughs> L.A. claims they're mainstream people. Atlanta claims future. Claims thug. You know. Nigga, there's a lot of fucking talent in New York. It's yeah. about being heard. It's about niggas respecting niggas shit. Mm-hmm. I don't know what that man listened to. You know what I'm saying like he, I'm sure he probably listened to a lot of other shit. Mm-hmm. You said you don't listen to rap though. I don't. So you don't like you don't know anybody coming up. I do. Oh. You know about it. You just I don't, know about you it. You don't listen to it in the whip. Yo, but you know, nah. You know what's crazy, bro? My 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 theory of listening to this shit is crazy because I don't want to listen to because I don't want to sound like nobody. Right. Yeah. And it's so easy to sound like somebody. Yeah. What do you listen to? Yo, I listen to um Sade. I listen to old school rock and roll. Okay. I listen to a lot of fucking um Journey. Right. Listen to a lot of Eagles. So no listen, rap at all. No rap, bro. Really? Okay. Only from ninety eight to two thousand two. Yeah. And yeah, I got you know get got you know some you got a few Young Thug in there and some Future in there. You just hear a song and that'll kind of hear get a song. Rotation. I can't hear. I cannot hear a mixtape. Okay. I cannot hear an album. I heard a theory that the music that you hear from like eighth grade to sophomore year of high school kind of sinks in real hard, and that's about that time. Yeah, yeah kind of but I mean, it really was a good time. Everything. I'm gonna it was say. It an amazing like, time, bro. Oh, you yeah. had TRL. You had yo yo. My yeah, time was yeah. fire, bro. My time was fire. So. Um, I, like, like you know, it's crazy. Like, um, obviously, you know, Ken Lamar, the um, what's the core album he just dropped? Um, you like the, the Temple Butterfly? Butterfly? Peep, peep though, like, obviously, like I'm reading through Twitter and Facebook, like the rave reviews. Oh, it's the greatest album, and I never heard it. Yeah. Until I was in a car with one of my bitches from LA, and she's a she's a fan of of Kendrick, and I'm listening to this shit. And it's the first time I actually listened to a whole album. I'm like, yo, this shit is fire. Like, uh-huh. wow, he's amazing. And the same thing with J. Cole. Like, I didn't even listen to the fucking, the shit you sitting on top of the house. What's it called, the album? Oh, I don't know. Uh, Forest Hills Drive or whatever. I never Forest Hills Drive, it, yeah. yeah. I, and I'm a fan of J. Cole. Just him. Because I've seen him perform. Right. And he's amazing. And so, But I never heard a body of work. Right. And I listen to this shit out here, too. I'm like, yo, this shit is dope. What the fuck? I'm missing out. Right. <laughs> you got to be more open-minded. There's J. Cole yeah, out yeah, there. I, I, future, yeah, I gotta, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> maybe I got to, yeah, exactly. I got to be more open-minded so that my, maybe I got, that's how I step my shit up, too. But, yeah, man, I'm not into particular into rap, man. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, this shit, because this shit sound too much, it sound too much the same. And as a rapper, and especially for somebody from New York, you're, you're fucking competitive and you just don't want to be like, damn, yo, why the fuck is it like this? Mm, and complain right. about it. You know what I'm saying? Like, everybody complains about how the sound of the radio is and why is this person popular. And So I don't want to even indulge in that type of shit. So let me just go over here and listen to some fucking uh, 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 Stevie Nicks and get high. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Let me do my thing over here with Fleetwood Mac. And all that, you know what I'm saying? And getting inspired over there, man. So, so let me ask you about somebody that you're friends with uh, out in New York, Joey Badass. Right. Right. And he's a dope rapper out in New York at this at this moment. How do you feel when uh, you see Troy Av uh, shitting on his dead homie? Is that weird for bozo. you? Bozo. You, you, don't, you don't care for it's that? He's a bozo. Did you like him before that, or was that the thing that made let you? Me tell you something about, let me tell you something about Joey, Joey, Joey Fats. Joey Badass. Joey Badass and Troy Av. Number one, man, no, let's just... Troy Ave can make records. He is, yeah. Troy Ave, Troy Ave is a good rapper. Mm-hmm. You can't hate on the homie. Put a song together, yeah. You, you can't. His son, son can make music, good music. His actions, bozo. Mm. And, and I'm sure he'll say the same thing. Yeah. You can't disrespect homie Kraft. See what I'm saying? Because homie got records. Homie can make music. Like, I like, like, I like the, that. This record is fire. I'm mm-hmm. sorry. Besides the whole Capital C shit. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, that's you a, heard it's it a once, solid. You're like, Damn, I could yeah. listen to that again. If it's it a, wasn't it's that, a solid yeah. disc record. Yeah. You cannot, don't, niggas can't hate on that shit. It's right. a solid disc record. He, and he did with a typical Bronx, Brooklyn nigga. Yo, fuck that. I'm going hard. Go hard. I'm take your neck off. Too hard, yeah. So cool. Like, would I have done that shit? I can't say yes and I can't say no. Really? I can't because, yo, and, and this is the art of war. I'm saying, like, why are you going to ease up? Now nah, you want to take that man's soul. You want to hurt that man. But you never had beef with somebody in rap that was like that, right? I would even have beef in rap, though. That's the whole point. Like, right. I'm not battling niggas in rap, bro. Yeah. That shit is corny. But the, the Troy and Joey beef was not something where he should have had to take it to that level either because it wasn't some it wasn't personal. It's but not, Adam, if that record came out in like 2002, no one would care. Hell yeah, they would have. That shit is way over the line. Talking shit I'm about just a saying because now we got the, inter- that. the internet heightens everything. It heightens it, but I don't care. But even back then, like nobody nobody talks shit about dead dudes in songs. Like that just he, doesn't happen he, that he, often. Yeah, it, he definitely he wilded out. Yeah, he wilded out. You know what I'm saying? But yo, bro, like sh- nigga. 
Ja Rule, I remember when Ja Rule was banning Eminem, he told my his daughter. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like no holds bar, like with shit like that, bro. Like, so what I would say is obviously Joey Bass is a is 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 a is a more superior artist mm-hmm. all around the board. Makes um, I'm sure he 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 like he's accomplished more. You can see that evident. It's evident. You know what I'm saying? Like he's more popular. Um. You know what I'm saying? But they both from Brooklyn and yeah. he, he wanna get on his you know, and I and I met Capital Steve, you know what I'm saying? And that was a tragic shit too. You know, I am sure if jo- if Troy Ave would have met that dude, Capital Steve, I'm sure he probably saying, ne- saying, probably would never have said that. You know saying it's he's not sensitive to that because he didn't know that man. He didn't give a fuck about that man. You know what I'm saying? But you know what I mean? Like I met that kid, you know what I'm saying? And and it, it, it it's fucked up to hear. But at the same time, like I said, like it's something that you can't res- it's, you you can't say you respect it. It's something you just gotta accept. You know, all right, man. He just he he went in on that kid. You know what I'm saying? Like, is it respectable? I can't answer that. But you he's know what making saying? stupid moves too because I've seen like uh, Combat Jack talking about him, and he said on Twitter, he said like, I'm more embarrassed of the shit that Troy Ave has been doing than anybody else that I ever interviewed. Like, he's like that shit is so whack, and it's such. You know, it just makes him look so much worse than it could ever make Joey. Like, he's trying to offend Joey. But at the same time, he's making himself look like such a doofus that everybody like us has to sit back. And I mean, just be Bam like, wow. said he's, tro- he's trolling, though, right? He kind of knows. Guess, you you yeah. think Troy knows? He's, he's aware annoying. of what he's doing. Of course, yo. The attention. Yeah. He he didn't he didn't uh, he didn't dig himself in a very deep hole. Yeah. That he's not gonna get out of. Yeah. If you go to that man, that man's page. I, I've I've went when that show was going on. I was going on that man's page, and I'm there's three thousand comments of niggas shitting on him. That's gonna Joey get to you, bro. Yeah. Right That's too, gonna yeah. get to you, but I don't give a fuck how much money you got, my nigga. That shit gonna get to you, my nigga. It's gonna be annoying as fuck. You see three thousand comments. You've never got those comments before ever in your life. To see three thousand comments of negativity. Yeah. Like yeah. yo, fuck you. You you ain't shit. You can never look at Instagram again. Come on, bro. Way, yeah. Like you ain't. Th- let's chill out, my nigga. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, what happens if you get one negative comment? Does it affect you at all? Not one. Not one. One one is funny, but three thousand is is, is, is is is. But if you put a video on YouTube and it got like a significant negative response, of course it bothers you. you. Yeah, yo, bro, that's why. That's why. That's why. As yo, know, that's why. Like, world stars are gift and a curse. Mm. Cause world star is amazing because of the outlet and people, everybody see it. Well, but the world star comments are more negative than anywhere else. Exactly. <laughs> so yeah. so every time I put a fucking video on world star, they fry oh, me. Yeah, yeah. And I was sitting what there. What do they say? To be, so, yo, to bro, be expected, some, you know? yo, they say everything in the book, bro. They, they talk about my, they talk about my national, they talk about my my culture. They think they say the racist shit. They say this nigga trash. They, I hear all the time. New York takes another L. Like they just go in. Like they just say the most craziest shit. Yo, you literally see a few niggas saying, "Yeah, that's fire, man." That's, <laughs> yeah, bands is dope, man. It's my first time. Yo, here. The people who like it just listen and click like yeah, and move exactly, on. The, the haters are like, like the haters don't even watch it. They the just go, "Here we go." Right. They might put it on their Twitter. They might leave a good YouTube comment. World Star, it's hate. And and yeah. that's yeah. and that's a different kind of that's a different kind of beast too because. What type of nigga literally <laughs> is taking time out to shit on another person on World it's Star, like, bro? It's 12-year-olds. That's in, amazing. Like, Wisconsin. Bro, there's, there's a lot of dudes on there that look like grown-ass men, too. Sad they they, gar- they men, grabbed yeah. that picture, but they're 12-year-olds. Yeah. Yo, yeah, like, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, bro. The, yo, bro, I don't give a fuck who you are, bro. That hate shit affects you, bro. Because you want to be... Maybe not... You, maybe some niggas want to be popular, right? Some niggas just want to be the best. Some niggas want to be great. So when somebody says like, eh, "I really ain't feeling that shit," like, you know, it, it's you're always gonna listen to that shit, and it's another thing to to let it affect you. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, so it, does it affect me? Nah. Do, does it? Do, when I look at it, does it bother? Like, ah, oh, like what are they saying? Of course. You know it might so make I'm, you I'm, think like, damn, maybe I shouldn't have put yeah, that video out. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, we yeah. normal, we human, bro. We make mistakes. So somebody might be seeing something that you can't look at. Now imagine a nigga like him getting three thousand of those. Yeah. Come on, bro. Come on, you turn. He turn off his notifications. <laughs> That's yeah. a fact. He, yeah. he 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 ain't not keeping those notifications on, bro. You know what I mean? Like he, cause he getting it. So he is in a motherfucking hole. I got one last name I want to ask you about before we wrap this up because we are in over an hour. And I, this is kind of going to be a lot of pressure, too, because you're speaking on behalf of all of your people. But how you feel about Donald Trump? <laughs> Donald Trump. <laughs> uh, yo, yo, shit is hard. Number one, he's, uh, we all know he's racist, right? Yeah. Uh, 
I, I'm just kind of tripping um, that a lot of rappers that are shit on him now took pictures with him five years ago. Yeah, and but they, nobody really thought of him as a racist until like a year ago. You know, like they might have thought he was an old scumbag, real estate, old rich dude, guy. All those buildings in New York. He didn't say the shit about the Muslims. He didn't say the shit about building the wall between Mexico. Like all that's new. We didn't know Donald Trump for that back five years ago. You know, he, the thing is, is that like. Yo, regardless of what, man, he's very, yo, he got big balls. Oh, yeah. He's courageous. Yeah. And I say that to say this because whether y'all niggas want to believe it or not, the way he's, what he's saying, a lot of motherfuckers before him felt that way. Mm. And they did not want to say it. And a lot of people in this country are voting for him feel that way. And that's the amazing thing. We didn't know Americans were that racist it, still. Yeah, exactly. So, so the fact that he can bring that out of people yeah. says a lot about, like, a lot about his, 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 um, who, who, like, it says a lot about how much fucking power this man really has with his words. Yeah, you know, Bam sees the whole side of every issue. He does. Yeah, I feel like Bam's for president. Yeah, yeah. That's why I knew he was going to be an awesome interview because he's he, yeah, well, like a lot one, of guys. You say Trump's like fuck that guy. Next question. I told you New Yorkers talk, but Bam, Bam's so, like thinks yeah. about it. Yeah, nah, man. You know what I'm saying? So, b- yo, bro, the the, the 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 better question is right. You gotta ask motherfuckers. All right, what you feel about Donald Trump? They going ah, la 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 la. Would you rather have a woman run this country or a man? If it came down to Hillary Clinton or Donald Trump, who would you vote for, really? You, no disrespect to the woman, but you, we really want a woman, bro? I don't want a woman, bro. You I don't want a woman. No, I You'd don't. You'd rather have Donald Trump than Hillary Clinton. I don't want to have Donald Trump either, but that's yeah. what I'm saying. You niggas is putting, when you put somebody back against the wall, it's like. You view Hillary as a woman. Yeah, I feel like she's kind of like she probably a boss. her reproductive organs. Have like been I feel like for a long time. Yeah. I feel like her. <laughs> nah, bro, this ain't fucking England, my nigga. We don't need. <laughs> yeah, bro, this is America, bro. This like Margaret Thatcher. We 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 don't built this country up, man. We don't need no woman. You know what I'm saying? And then you know what's crazy? I was speaking to somebody else about Bernie Sanders because you know he for the poor, he for the he for me, he for my people. Yeah. And somebody brought up a good point. They're like, yo. You think this country's bad now that we in, that we're in poverty? You see, like, get Bernie back in. You see, like, get Bernie here. We're going to be even worse. Why do you think that? Because he's for too much of the poor people. Yeah. But and I it think makes we need sense. a little bit more of that. Huh? Yeah, yeah you're right. You know what I'm saying? But w- 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 because it's almost like I said, bro. Like, he's for the minorities. He's for the, 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 the broke people and shit like that. So how can we really make money if that's all your... That's all your shit. That's all you're going for. You know what I'm saying? So you, you trying to knock out Wall Street. You don't give a fuck about the banks. He's doing all this other shit. You know what I'm saying? Which is cool because it's protecting us. But then, and, and on one hand, we got to make this country big too. We got to make money in this motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, it's hard. Like, you know what I mean? Like, Hillary Clinton, out of all the motherfuckers, she is the best candidate. But at the same time, I don't want a woman, bro. I just don't want her. I, and I, I just want, find her kind of gr- weird. I, I just think that she's cool though because she's she she's about making money too, and she can make money because she remember she came on the bill when you know that's the last time this country really was good when Bill was in power when the Bill was 90s. in power. You know what I'm saying? That's when niggas was getting money. You know what I'm saying? Like, and on top of that, she's for the poor too, and she's for the women, and she's for the rights, and she's for the gays and all that shit. So it's like it, it goes hand in hand. But the fact that she's a fucking woman. And that's what people were saying. People were saying that if Hillary gets voted, it's almost like the, it's, it's going to be like another Obama administration. It's going to be another Obama for four years, just him not being there, because she's almost a part of that cloth yeah. of Obama. You know I was going to say the mean? comments are about to get lit because he's talking like bad about Hillary, but there's only guys who watch No Jumper. Yeah, it's like 4% women who watch this. So I think the 4% right, yeah. bad comments. What the hell? Also, we're over an hour in, so this is only for the deeply initiated. You know, <laughs> people who really stuck around are the ones who are hearing this shit. No, yeah. yeah. No, but it's good to know your uh, political beliefs. Oh, yeah, I, I have one more question for you. Let's get it, bro. You're good friends with Ebro? Yeah. Is Ebro a good guy? Because a lot of people on the underground kind of clowning <sighs> on him because he sort of, like, did a whole thing with Lil Uzi Vert. I don't know if you saw this. What do you do? He was going to put on some, like, primo beats for, for Uzi to rap over, and Lil Uzi Vert was like, nah, don't give me none of that old school shit. And, he, and Ebro kind of, like, was, you know, he wasn't a huge dick about it, but he was a little weird to Uzi about it. So a lot of people in the underground sort of, like, Clowning on you, bro, for being an old man. We got to know if you if you fucks with him or not. He's a good guy. Did he say that? Sh- did he do that shit online? Or, on it air? was on YouTube. Yeah, it's got like it was on YouTube. So Lil like, Uzi Vert went to Hot Seven. He tried to do that. Yeah, he and wouldn't rap over the Primo beats. Wow, though, I didn't know that. He's new school. You know, they don't like that shit. But that's whack, though. Yeah, you, that's don't, whack. you don't like that he wouldn't rap over it. That's whack. You'll rap over any beat. Any beat. You rap over a random ass Chief Keef beat, and you think you could sound good on it? Everything. Okay. But, but, but this, why, why we do it for? Yeah. So so if I'm a basketball player, so I'm only good at home. I can't play away. Yeah, it was saying like, no, nigga, I rap on anything. Like that's the art of rapping. Like, right. no, no, like, 
Anybody put a motherfucking beat on, be prepared. One was, why would I say, nah, I'm good? But you battled. So you're a real rapper. You know, you could, you could adapt to the different situations. Yeah, but he, had, but you he rap with no beat. Yeah, so. but he can flow. Like, yeah. he, has, he has good delivery. He has good cadence. Like, why you can't rap on a primo beat? Yeah. Why you, why you can't be able to swim on that bitch? Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, like, like so in that aspect, like, I mean, I would, if I was Lil Uzi Verse, I would have rapped on it. Mm-hmm. Um, Ebo is 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 Ebo is a jerk that way that he's gonna fucking he's gonna set you up like that. Right. Ebo's a smart ass motherfucker, so he's gonna be like, you know what? I'm gonna go and put some real rapidy rap shit for Uzi Vert. Right. Cause I know he probably gonna be either he gonna rap on it and be caught in a fucking weird position and and make himself like a fool. Or he gonna do what Uzi Vert so did. Ebro, like, Ebro might have known that was a world course, star moment right there. Of course, yeah. <laughs> that's a smart. Yo, Ebro's a smart dude for whatever yeah. it's worth. And, 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 and on top of that, man, like you know, for people that don't know that man, you know what I'm saying? Because I didn't have countless conversations with that man. I didn't seen that man in clubs. Like that man and gave me countless um, advice. Very intelligent dude. Yeah. You know what I mean? Very intelligent dude. Yeah, he could be a jerk, and I I, I said that shit like I tell I tell him that he could be a jerk sometimes and very um aggressive. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But He's very intelligent. You know what I'm saying? He knows what the fuck he's doing. I don't think he's dead at I don't think he's purposely or try to come and fuck up New York radio the way people are saying. And I, and I don't personally think that he tries to shit on underground because he's helped me out a lot. Right. He's put me on the radio. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, he's given me an opportunity. You think he looks out for you, though, because you rap like a dude from New York? I think he looks, yeah, and I think he looks out for me because he respect me, too. Right. Like, I came to him respectful. Like, like I'm one of those dudes that I got his number, I got this person number, and I won't I won't blow you niggas up. Right. There's some niggas out there, bro. There's some rappers out there, bro, in New York City. <laughs> they will go to every motherfucking club a DJ is in, buy bottles every fucking Friday and Sunday. Really? Just to get on that nigga's good side. Nigga like me, I ain't sucking nobody dick. So I don't give a fuck who numbers in my phone. When I see you, it's love. What's good? You good? Wow, yeah. this and that. But I'm not blowing you up. Yo, yo, I sent this record. Yo, yo, I sent this record. Yo, yo, I got you, you heard this shit? <laughs> so I think niggas respect that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because, because him, a person in his position, he, he expects people to be showering him with, yo, come on, bro. I got this. I got that for you. So when you got a nigga like me just coming around like, yo, listen, he, bro, I, I want the radio, but I don't need that motherfucker. Yeah. And I make that shit... Clear to the motherfuckers. Right. Like, yo, bro, I, I, if you got me on the radio, hallelujah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Because I know what to do, what to do for me. But I'm not, I'm not here. I'm not gonna be out here losing sleep because I'm not on the radio. Right. Oh, because I don't know Ebo. And Ebo don't want to play my records. I know Ebo when no Ebo. When I get hot, nigga, or when when the demand is there, nigga, you you have to play the shit. <laughs> yeah, so I'm yeah, not yeah. even worrying about that. That's you know what I'm saying? Point, yeah. I'm not even worrying about that. The, like uh, m- when motherfuckers complain about not getting on the radio. Money, just get hot. Yeah. Just get hot. Yeah. Create c- create that demand so niggas can't say no. Yeah. Why complain that you're not on the radio? If I would never. If you're that hot, then you don't really have a reason to ask. You know, like yeah. what are you what are you based on? I That's think about how that. you get a no jumper. People. Well, put I think you about in the that comments. all the time. The yeah. kid, kids hit me up and they say, "Yo, let me get a no jumper." But I never heard a song like they should want me to hear a song or like give a fuck about him in some way. Obviously, yo. I'm not gonna have you on the podcast if I don't care at about at about one song. Right. You know? Like yeah, you know, yo get. And that's why I hate when people complain about the dumbest shit. Like yo get hot. You know what I'm saying? Like, now it's one thing. You see, I'm in a different stage, right? So I get mad at different shit. Like, mm-hmm. the shit I get mad at is that when I run into these DJs and I run into the E bros and all these people, first thing they tell me is, yo, Bams, yo, what you got going on? Yo, Bams, what's new? I need to hear it, Bams. Come on, anything I do, I got you for anything. All right, bro, no doubt. Two, three weeks go by. Yo, 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 I'm about to send you a record. I'll hear it later. <laughs> or, yo, I'll get back to it. That gets me mad because, yeah. cause, cause then I'm like, yo, my nigga, I'm not looking for you motherfuckers. So right. why the fuck you niggas is, it, why you, it's almost like, don't tell me shit I want to hear. Tell me what's real. Right. Like, because that's the, that's the industry talk, right? When you see yeah. rappers and DJs in the, in the clubs and shit like that, they automatically think they have to tell them niggas, let me get your math, yo. Let me get your email, yo. Yo, send me some beats, yo. Send me some records. Because that's what common to say. Yeah. And then when a rapper actually does it, if you didn't have no intentions to play in the first place, you're going to piss this rapper off. You didn't have to say that. You didn't exactly, have to say yeah. that. Just say, yo, how you doing? How was your day? Man, how, what you eat today? Oh, you ate some turkey breast? All right, my nigga, get, <laughs> keep it moving. That's all you got to say. Don't give me the whole hoopla, your eye, yo. Give me your email, cause then and, and that shit happens a lot. You know what yeah. I'm saying? With me, you know what I'm saying? Like and, and that and that gets me tight. You know what I'm saying? And that's what I, I, it's not tight to a point where I'm on Twitter blasting it on Instagram. I keep that shit to myself because at the end of the day, just get hot. Get and hot. all that shit will go subside. And you're yeah. talking about you're talking about radio. You talk about a program director, an owner. 
There's only 40 spots for a current song to be played. There's major labels, tons of money. You're competing against all this shit. So to go to somebody who's unsigned, doesn't have money being mm-hmm. promoted behind their record, and s- try to give them that hope that like I- I'll definitely like play it. Like, that's dumb. Yeah, it is. And, and, and it's like what you said. Like it's very um, it's difficult for the independent artists. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. You know what I'm saying? So so you know when I was getting, you know I get played on the radio. You know what I'm saying? But it's not. It's not consistently. You know what it's I'm not like across all the stations it's across not. the entire country. And, and that's a fucking global hit. That's what you want. You know what I'm saying? Like, but you know, it's hard for an independent rec. It's hard for an independent um artists to do it because literally, like, you need about forty thousand dollars for a record to go. So if so, let's say you have a record, right? And you give you got radio dudes and and, and, and certain labels. You put forty thousand dollars behind any record, bro, and you have the right connection. That's just gonna be a, a, a global hit. It's gonna be. You know, it's gonna be all over the United States of America. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of independent artists don't have forty thousand now just to throw out. Right. Because you also have to take that risk. You might lose that forty. Yeah, right. You spend saying? forty and have nothing happen. It might have nothing. You might turn that forty to f- ten million, but you might lose that whole forty. So a lot is it's it's a big chunk of money for for a rapper to, to take a risk. So most of the time, independent artists all they want to do is they they name they, they like you know what? I'm just gonna build with niggas. I'm gonna try to get cool with these DJs. I'm going you know I'm, I'm gonna do my thing, get myself hot, and get my name buzzing, and I'm just going to get on the radio just off word of mouth and just off my relationships. And it happens, but it doesn't last because there's no money being shifted. So once once your little run is over, they don't want to put you back on it because you ain't put no money in the first place. Right. You dig what I'm saying? So it's yeah. it's 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 hard for independent artists. You know what I'm saying, but you know they. Niggas like Ebro, man, Hot 97, definitely, you know what I'm saying? They've, they've looked out for a lot of independent artists, right. Troy Ave included. Yeah. Uh, there's a whole bunch of um, New York artists who they play, you know what I'm saying, who they give that time to, me included, you know what I'm saying? Joey Badass, whatever his situation is, him included, you know what I'm saying? So, like, they definitely show love, and Ebro's definitely a nigga that, that does show love, so I can never take that away from that, man. Yeah. That's what's up. Hey, we're like uh, past the time limit here. Uh, what do we what do we need to wrap this up with? What you got coming? What's what you gonna plug? Pounding Henny. Yo. Signed the OVO. Podcast brought to you by Hennessy. Yo, yo, who's the OVO plug? Yo, yo, yo. Shout out to the motherf- Yo, shout out to the gang. <laughs> OVO, man. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Drake. Shout out to Drizzy. You know Shout what I'm saying? Shout out to Drake. We'll see you uh, next month on the podcast. I, I heard he's interested. <laughs> oh, <you know>? fuck <laughs> yeah. That's fine. Yo, if you guys get Drake, man, that's fucking dope. You're going to have this whole shit shut down, man. I had a weird that. daydream the other day about that, like just thinking about like having like Drake or Kanye on the podcast and how different it would be immediately. Like, oh, immediately. Man. Forget about it. You, to think about? You got, no, I wouldn't even need a mic. I would just be watching him talk. <laughs> Say whatever you want. Go ahead. Oh. Hey, yo, you guys, yeah, you guys will get sponsors out of the yin yangs. You guys will be out of here, man. I won't even get you guys. I, you guys won't be answering my DMs no more after that. Oh, no, no, no. We gotta be, we gotta stay with the streets no matter what. We're not gonna do Kanye or, or Drake and then go right to fucking I don't even know Tiger next or something. No, we're gonna stay in the streets. Nah, man. But after yeah, our inevitable Drake. Coast motherfucker. Out, um. Yeah, man. You know. Um. Just definitely. Um. I, I have no fucking. I have no um plans when to drop a new project. Okay. Uh, not because. Um. I don't want to. It's just because. I'm just in. I'm I'm in just in a creative space right now, like so inspiring state state right now that what I already have to decide. You know what I'm saying? Like I want to continue working on it. You know what I'm saying? So I, I what I've been doing thus far is just releasing records here and there, touring. You know what I'm saying? Just keeping my name revel, prevalent. You know, shaking hands and kissing babies. You know what I'm saying? So until then, man. You know, just fucking follow me on Instagram. At Bodega Bams. Bams. Follow Z. me on Twitter. At Bodega Bams, you know what I'm saying? Like Support your local bodega. Support your local bodega. I came in like that. Copa Lucy. Yeah, you heard? Bams for president. Bams for motherfucking... Bams 2020. Bams for presidente. El presidente. For El presidente, you know what I'm saying? We're with the mother, man. Oh, yeah. Fuck Donald Trump. Shit. Bodega Dan- Bams for president. This is No Jumper. Coolest <laughs> podcast in the world. Subscribe. YouTube, SoundCloud, iTunes. I'm very thankful to uh, Bodega Bams for coming through today. We're trying to get hot in the city. He's going to help us out. You know, after that Drake podcast, we're going to be hot <laughs> everywhere. But thank you very much much, my man. I appreciate it. Love is love, bro. Peace. That was dope, man. That was a really good one. Yo, you know what's crazy? When I was when I was going to do this shit, I had people hitting me up like, yo, you don't do no jumpers? And I had a particular bitch hit me. She's like, yo, you gonna fucking do that show? And she was like, yo, I hope you punch that guy out of his fucking face. Wow, who's this girl? 